Hello Chepips. Today I'm going to be looking at a card game which plays a bit like Magic the Gathering, has the look of an elegant chess set and kind of feels like you're playing a Game of Thrones. That game is called... Um... Um... Uh, Abyss? This game is not Abyss, it is in fact called Autus Regni, which you can just about read there, and it's upside down and backwards. That's that's, that's fantastic to me, isn't it? It's basically a, a two-player card game where you're attacking your other player, and there's some deck building, some tower defense, and there's some other little elements in there as well. Um, this little tapestry which comes in the game, you're going to need this, because uh, it describes all the 15 cards which are in the game. Because these 15 cards don't have any text on them whatsoever. They are just, uh, they have this art on it, this kind of um, Anglo-Saxon art on them. Okay, so this is going to be a very, very brief overview of how the game plays, okay? Each player will take their rack of cards at the beginning of the game, and then they will construct a deck of 24 cards out of this lot. Okay, there are five of each type. There's five face cards, there's five building cards, and there's five uh, political cards. That was the word that was coming up with. Each player will have start with a palace, they start with some cubes, they'll start with their deck, and there'll be some other decks out on the table. There'll be another player called the, the Viking player, which is an automated player. And then you're ready to play. Let's take a closer look. Each player will start by putting a cube of their colour in this bag, draw one out to decide who the first player is. Once that's done, you place the Viking player in between. So basically, it'll be the first player goes, the second player go, and then the Vikings go, then before it goes back to the first player. Each player will draw five cards from their deck, and then they play. They can play one action per turn, and they can do some free actions. I'll go through some of those in a minute. First thing, normally an action will just be playing a card from your hand in front of you. So, for example, I'm going to place this prince into the palace. Okay? Doesn't do much, it just makes him a lord, which is great. And then to say that my turn is over, I draw another card. The second player would play, and then the Vikings would approach, and you just mark it by placing one of these black tokens in front. Then it'll be my second turn, and what am I going to do? I'm going to play one action, I'm going to play this field. And this field will let me recruit soldiers from the soldier deck. So I just take one, I look at it, it's got one soldier, so it's a strength of one. The soldiers come in ones and knights, so that's ones and twos, their attack power. And then I just put that in my reserve. And because I've got a field, whenever I have a, a fight against my opponent or decide to attack them, I can field one of my soldier cards. So I may have collected several of these uh, over the time of the game. And that just means that I can just put one out every time. If I had two fields, I'd be able to put two out. Now there's another thing that you can build. You can build a market. A market multiplies a field. So... Now, I could technically put two soldier cards out to fight my opponent or defend against my opponent. Having a field as well gives me an option of a different type of action. That action is recruit. So, let's just say that I didn't have the market there and I just got my field. Um, and on my turn, I don't play a card. I just say, I'm going to recruit. And basically, because i got one field, I draw one soldier card. Oh, it's a knight. Brilliant. Simple as that. If I had the market card, I'd be able to hire two cards and put them into my reserve. It doesn't matter how many markets I have, I can only multiply it by two in the maximum. So if I had four fields and two markets, each field would give me, uh, I'd be able to place eight soldiers out in the field, and whenever I recruit, I'll only be able to recruit two soldiers. Let's move this out of the way. Another thing I could build is I could build 
another palace and that would create another fife which I could then again attach another field to. Again that won't make any difference to the numbers that I can recruit or put out, well it will make a difference to the numbers that I can put out but it's another separate kind of um, tower of buildings. There are also churches and cathedrals. Now, with churches, um, they help out sometimes, okay? Um, there are situations when you have a battle, uh, there'll be a card which says that the church decides who wins the battle. So it's the player with the most churches would decide. The cathedral, uh, there can only be one cathedral in play. So you may have a handful of cathedrals, but you'll only be allowed to put one out. And if you put one out and your opponent hasn't got one out, Brilliant, but if your opponent's already got one out, you can't put another cathedral out, and the cathedral will block an abdication. What is an abdication? Well, if you've got a prince lord in a palace or, or in a castle even, uh, you can abdicate your throne. So you're basically saying, well, I'm, I'm jumping down from the throne. You play this banner card as your action, and what will happen is all your cards from your discard pile, plus the prince himself, will go back into your deck and then you shuffle them and then you've extended the life of your your Earl and your Lord Prince is now the Earl of your um, Earldom. Okay, there's some other characters in the game. You have um, a vassal, not a Tom, but it's a vassal. He can be used as a Lord or he can be used to fight or he can be used um, as an emissary to the Vikings. So you could send him to the Vikings and what that'll do is that'll let you put one of your colour cubes into the bag. So when the Vikings arrive you've got a better chance of your colour cube being pulled out. The monk as well, he can be knighted and again he could be used as an emissary and you'd put two cubes into the bag. But you can't use him in fighting, and he does an attack power of nothing. You've got a champion, this guy here. He's a very strong fighter, which you can, again, you can use as a lord, and you can use for fighting. But you've also got this mercenary, which you can't make a lord, but you can place out on the field, and he will create another space for you to place a soldier in. These are the five political cards in the game. I'll just go through these. I won't show you what they do. But um, we've already seen that the banner card, you can abdicate your earldom to your prince lord. But you can also try and become king. Now you can play these just in front of you. If you have two more than any other player, you become the king. And you take the king card. And with the king card, you can just field an extra soldier or two. And that also just gives you more attack power. And the king can never die. You can also... Throw down a challenge to another player, you, a, a joust. You can say, I'm going to hold a tournament. And you basically wager a piece of land. You do a, um, a, a kind of three-card rummy. There's a deck of cards here. These are the joust cards. And they are made up of champions, vassals, and princes. And you deal two of these out to a player. And they also have to play a card. And the highest hand wins. You know, three champions would be the winner. A banquet card just lets you draw two cards from your deck. That's all it does. Simple. This card, the ally card, this card is used to block the treachery and intrigue cards. These two here. Treachery, which is this one here, basically you can use that to assassinate a lord from the other player. So you basically point them out and then say, yeah, I'm going to kill them and then kill them unless they block it. You can also use it to damage the Earl's hand. So you can play this card and say, I'm going to damage your hand. And then you can take cards out from their hand. And you can also use it to remove a mercenary from their field. Whereas the Intrigue card here, you can steal properties from their uh, fiefs. Or you can steal reserve armies from their reserve deck. Or you can steal a mercenary and get them to work for you. Now let's step back a place and just talk about the free action that you can do. As well as playing a card or recruiting an army, um, you can play a free action. And a free action is just to basically play one or more of the cards from your hand in front of you face down. And it becomes a tower. So you can play as many of these as you want on a turn. And a tower just absorbs damage from an attack. Now you can attack your opponent's towers or you can attack one of their palaces or castles or you can attack one of their fives so it means that you attack the actual buildings inside the fife. Also the Vikings can do the same. 
If the Vikings arrive, which means that all these eight black dobbers arrive in front, which means that eight turns have passed, the Vikings are arrive, and you basically take the number of cards to the number of players plus one. And that is the force of the Viking attack. And then you'll take one token out of this bag, and whatever colour it is, that player gets to choose who the Vikings attack. This white token, I should explain, is if one player attacks another before the Vikings arrive, you put that in front, and it counts as a kind of pause in the Vikings' approach. And then on the next turn, that just goes back. Once all the tokens are out, as I said, the Vikings are arrive, you remove the tokens from play, and the Vikings are in play throughout the game. I'm going to quickly run over attacking. It's just a simple case of numbers. Okay, the Vikings are attacking. They have an attack value of 1, plus 2, plus 2, which is 5. They can attack three things. They can attack the towers, they can attack one of the palaces, or they can attack one of the fives, which is either this field or this field and the market. The defending player decides whether they're going to defend, if they can defend, if they've got any fields to defend. Okay, and if they decide not to defend, whatever the Vikings are attacking, they win. Now let's say that these Vikings are attacking the towers here. They have a value of 5, these have a defense of 3, so 5 minus 3, they're gone. Now if the Vikings were attacking this palace here, they have 5, these towers block 3 of the attack, they kind of absorb, which means 2 carry over into the palace. This has a defense of two, which means this palace, this vassal, this piece of land are destroyed. Now, there are ways of capturing palaces if you use, say, if in attack a prince lord, he will actually capture lands. But if the defender decided to defend, and he could defend, he could field a maximum of three soldier cards from his hand. So I would place three there. I could also use this vassal here. And if I win or lose, this vassal will go back into his castle as lord. They never die. And if you're king, you never die. You can also play any cards from your hand. But the thing is, if you play a champion or, or a mercenary, you will lose them after the battle. And it's basically the same thing. But you will draw a card from the battle deck. And there are three, four different types of battle cards. You've got a normal battle, which is kind of like what I showed you. But instead of... The defense of the towers, the first thing that's going to be defended against is these characters here. So these characters would absorb one point each of the five attacks. So five minus four is one. And then the one would carry over into the defensive towers. So there's no attack getting to wherever it's going to. A normal battle, that would be a normal battle. There's also the attackers win, which means that basically the attackers win, so there is no defence, so to speak. And then the defenders win, which basically means that the attack just kills all of the defenders. The defenders, uh, the attackers, sorry, are all gone. And then you have the church decides, and the player with the most churches decides who wins. So there you go. That's a very quick overview of a very deep game which uses 15 different types of cards. So there you go, that's Autus Regni. Now, this game is a board game that everybody who owns one of those elegant kind of chess sets and they have it displayed nicely on the coffee table should be getting to replace that chess set. This game is just an abstract game between two players. It plays like a chess or a go or anything else like that. Um, but it is simple as a collectible card game but it's not a collectible card game because there's only 15 different types of card but you're building your deck and you're making it different to your opponent and then you just have this kind of tower defense you're building up and you're attacking your opponent and hoping that they run out of cards before you do and it's great but to look at it, you don't think it's great. Yes, the artwork is very off-putting. But it also gives us its own kind of... Um, je ne sais quoi, what's the word? It gives us its own character, its own personality. This game stands out like Abyss, the box cover, yeah? But the artwork, as I said, puts people off and prevents them from playing, which is a shame. 
Um, again, the cards where they have no text on them. People are always worry that they're not going to be able to learn the rules because the, 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 it's not written on the cards. But you can do. Um, once you've played with the deck, you know what those cards are. Those cards and your deck's not going to be made up of all 15 cards. It's going to be made up of some of them, seven or eight different types of cards. So you'll learn those eight cards. For those of you that are worried, you can actually buy these decks here. And these decks have the text on them. And they're basically a built up deck of 24 cards. And as you can see, they explain everything on them. What each card does, what their power is, what their strength is. So, there is an alternative. But like any deck building game, the problem's going to be in what you draw. Because you're only drawing one card at a time. So the luck of the draw can really swing the game your way. That is the only downer, but that's like normal kind of CCGs and deck building games. But the thing is the game doesn't take that long to play. You can play probably for 10 minutes, you can play for 30 minutes, and then afterwards you rebuild your deck. And that's the good thing. There's this kind of like meta game in between the game you, as you try to like outthink your opponent, like rock, paper, scissors, dynamite, and Vulcan. You're, you're, you're building a deck which is going to slaughter their deck and you're trying to guess what the kind of deck they're going to build. Are they going to build a kind of like a land based deck which would be kind of like a, a Tyrrell deck or are they going to build a political deck like a Lannister deck or are they going to build one with lots of forces in it a bit like a, a Stark deck and you've got to you've got this rock paper scissors game going on in between your game and then you start your game again and as I've just said the game feels like Game of Thrones, the way it's laid out. It's totally abstract, but it could be the theme that's layered on top. This here is the Autus Regni app. This is only a beta at the moment, but uh, this should be coming out later this year. And as you can see, it's a big four player game I've got going here. And you can play online or offline. And it's just a simple point and click. It's as simple as solitaire on your computer. Although, um, yeah, it is a computer, not an app or an iPhone. But you can play it on an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, so look out for this later this year. And as I said, four players. So as you see from the digital version, you can play three or four players. So why can't you do it with this? Well, you can with this expansion, which gives you two other decks of cards. A yellow deck and a green deck. And as you can see, they're not open because nobody wants to play this game with me, which is a shame because this game plays better with three and four. When I play on the computer, th your options are open. And then I think about the possibilities of playing with human players and being able to negotiate and say, I'm not gonna attack you, I'm gonna leave you alone because you, you haven't got any good cards in front of you at the moment, which is a shame. And then when you gain control of the Vikings, throw them at them. <laughs> Evil, eh? Ah, a positive about cards having no text. There is plenty of room for expansions. Just think, you could change the rules of the cards yourself. But if an expansion comes out, and it may be just an expansion of two or three extra cards, you can integrate new rules with these cards to make those cards more powerful and give you even more avenues to win. Which is great because uh, there is a lot of ways to win in this game. You can there's different roads that you can go down, but to add more to it would be fantastic. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah.